Joining me right now on the line is Yana Murdahl. She's a member of the North Dakota Tea Party Caucus, and they've got a big event coming up uh, this weekend, actually, in Bismarck. Yana, welcome to the program. Happy to have you on. Hi, Rob. Great to be on. It's a beautiful day. Tell me, uh, tell me about this event that's coming up in Bismarck. Well, we're, we're gathering the troops, so to speak, uh, out in uh, Bismarck this Saturday, um, and we're going to you know, end it with a concert and some fun in the evening, but have uh, meetings throughout the day and uh, actually also introducing a straw poll uh, for the candidates uh, for national office. So it's going to be an exciting day. Uh, we have lots of groups from across the state that are going to be represented there with tables and, and members and stuff. So we're hoping for a, a great, great event out there. And it's it's one of those things where it's not a rally necessarily, but it, it will rally the troops. We're getting close to, uh, you know, 2012 here, January, February, March, when we're going to have district meetings, and we just want uh, citizens to get involved, you know, in the process in North Dakota and uh, give them uh, avenues and uh, do some, uh, you know, give them tools how to get involved. So uh, we're hoping people will uh, take a Saturday afternoon and join us, and uh, we're going to have a steak fry, and you can go on our website, uh, ndtpc.com, to check it out, and RSVP for a steak fry as well, so. Now, I understand that there's going to be a, uh, a straw poll as well. Tell us about that. Yeah, you know, it's kind of one of those things, uh, you, you know, Rob, that, that, that came upon us by popular demand. A lot, a lot of people want to have their voices heard right now. There's, you know, we kind of have a good problem right now is that we have lots and lots of good candidates running for a lot of seats, and um, it's kind of an interesting field coming up for 2012, even in our congressional seats here in North Dakota. So by popular demand, we're going to do a straw poll. We're going to hand out... One ballot per person, no no cheating here, at 4 o'clock as they enter the Tea Party. And um, all the candidates that uh, are able to come, we haven't confirmed everybody yet, but several candidates are going to be there. We'll get five minutes each, only five minutes to speak uh, at the dinner time between 5.30 and 6. And we'll collect the, the ballots at 6 o'clock and announce the results around 7 o'clock. And uh, we will make those the results public on our website. But, you know, of course, it's an unofficial straw poll, uh, nothing scientific here, but just uh, given the, the good folks in North Dakota a chance to say, you know, this is who I will likely vote for. And so kind of let the candidates know that there has been a sort of a paradigm shift in, in public policy arena in the last few years due to the Tea Party. And so we want to hear from them, and we want to see a good, uh, good, vigorous debate coming up towards the convention, certainly conventions in, uh, in the spring and certainly up towards the election next November. Do you think, uh, you know, what? I sometimes get a little concerned about these straw polls because we see them happen all over the, like in the presidential races, and they happen all over the place. And, uh, you know, I, they don't always seem to, to reflect much of anything other than what the people who happen to be in that room feel at the time. Uh, you know, I, I almost worry that, that they do more harm than good. Are my worries unfounded? I think so because this is unofficial, but I'm, I'm with you, Rob. You know, I, I called in the other day when Scott had uh, Scott Rasmussen on and, and questioned him with the same thing. You know, we're kind of getting overwhelmed by polls, you know, and it's almost like a reality show it's become. But this one is very grassroots, very local, and I think it'll be an interesting uh, take. I'll, I'll, I'll be very interested to see, to see where the temperature, if you will, politically is with the, the folks that show up that are Tea Party uh, people in North Dakota. So. It's kind of just a little hint to the to the candidates, I think, to sharpen their tools a little bit and give us specifics, and also um, give you know the Tea Party people and regular North Dakota citizens a chance to kind of vet their candidates a little bit, to visit with them after they speak, and and get a little bit of more uh, information. Um, so often, I think we we count on sort of the social media and, like you said, the polls that are being uh, literally shot at us ten times a day here through Fox News and other things. Uh, maybe a little bit more personal touch, you know, for those candidates that are able to show up, so we can uh, we can kind of feel the temperature. And you know, again, I think uh, they need to sharpen their tools. I really think uh, you can't get away with things uh, as much now. And when you have people like you with uh, say anything blog dot com and and other things, um, candidates need to really come out there and show us their uh, true colors. And I think that's a good thing. Are uh, you know, do I understand this right? Democrat candidates are invited to. I don't know how likely they are to show up, but are Democrat uh, candidates invited to? Pam Gullison, I guess, being the uh, the most obvious one. Yeah, I think we're. Uh, we, you know, and the, the thing is, we didn't. We had already printed the ballots uh, when we heard that Heidi Heitkamp is uh, is thinking or considering getting in the Senate race. So she's not on it. We would have put her on it. Pam Gullison is on it. We put everybody on uh, that we thought were running. Um, Governor Dalrymple is on it because it is assumed that he's running for a seat. But, again, 
like I said, this is non non uh, official, unofficial poll, yeah. Rob. So uh, we are in the process right now, contacting all all the candidates and inviting them. But like we have some that are still hanging out there, sort of, and not having said if they're going to run or not. So maybe it will be up an opportunity for some of them to come and and actually announce or say that they actually are running. You know, because we're getting to that point where we sort of need to know who's who's in and who's out and. Uh, we saw that on the national scene last week, and I think we need to see it in, in North Dakota pretty quick here, so we can rally the troops behind uh, good conservative candidates here. Let me let me ask. You, I, I agree with that. I think sometimes they have a tendency to delay and delay and to say, "Oh, I'm thinking about it and whatever." And and I understand there's an impulse to not want the political process to drag on forever. But you know, I also don't like to cram the whole process of getting to know these people into just a few months either. If they're gonna if they're gonna run for office to, to to represent us, I think we ought to have more time to uh, to evaluate them. Let me let me ask you this question, and and just you personally, not necessarily representing the North Dakota Tea Party Caucus, but as a politically active and involved person in North Dakota, what do you think about Heidi Heitkamp uh, possibly jumping back into this race? Because I I got to tell you, I, I think Democrats could do better. That's my that's my take. Well, I tell you what, personally, I and no offense towards Heidi at all, because I don't know her. Uh, remember well when she ran back in 2010, I believe. It, no, no, 2000, I believe it was. Don't know her personally at all. Um, but I think it's a little uh, kind of a Hail Mary desperation thing on the Democratic Party in North Dakota. I think what's happening, and I think North Dakota, Rob, is unique in this, because we've had good, strong, pro-life conservative sort of uh, uh, Democrats in the past, and they're going to have to start choosing now after having Obama in the White House and Reid and Pelosi uh, radically so far on the left, you can't kind of find them off the left cliff. They're going to have to rethink their associations. And I personally think, and I have respect for a lot of these uh, hardworking people that have been Democrats in North Dakota for years, because that that party used to be for the people, but it's taken a a socialist left turn, and I think uh, they're losing ground big time. So I think it's kind of a Hail Mary I'm not sure if Heidi will get in. I think she's being pressured to get in because they're, they're, they're lacking good candidates. And reality is, with the leader that they have nationally in the White House, who is so out of touch with the people and certainly out of touch with the mainstream Americans in North Dakota and the Midwest here, I think they're going to have a hard, hard time uh, getting the lever pulled for, for a Democratic uh, senator or House member again for a long, long time. So well, I, I for think those I, of us who are strong conservatives, so I guess what I would say, if you're, you're a moderate Democrat, you might have to think about uh, putting a different letter behind your name as you go into those polls in November, because uh, obviously the Democratic leadership in D.C. is taking our nation down a, not only a wrong track, Rob, but a disastrous uh, uh, road with a socialistic I, I think, uh, thing. I, I, think, I think a lot of what, what, what she's saying about, you know, she might run, she's going to make an announcement in 30 days. I wouldn't be surprised, having floated this out there, that this isn't a trial balloon. They're floating the possibility out there, and then they're going to be doing some intense polling to try to figure out, you know, what the public's reaction is, and then that ultimately will inform her decision. I think they're looking for a reaction, is is what I'm thinking. Yannick, can you hold over, and we'll we'll get more into this after the break? I will do that. More to come straight ahead on the Scott Hennon Show. I'm Rob Port sitting in. Don't go away. Welcome back. Scott Hennon Show. Rob Port from SayAnythingBlog.com, North Dakota's most popular political blog sitting in. For the chairman, Scott Hennon, we're talking with Yana Murdahl. She's a Tea Partier in the state, member of the North Dakota Tea Party Caucus, and talking to her about the 2010 elections and, you know, specifically this news that Heidi Heitkamp's getting in. Would you agree with that assessment? I I guess you didn't have time to respond before the break. But uh, my assessment that this is sort of a a trial balloon, I I think they're trying to measure what level of interest or support there might be for, for a Heidi Heitkamp campaign uh, in the state. Uh, is, is that sort of your take as well? Yeah, it could be. You know, I just I just think it's one of those, uh, again, no offense to her personally, but kind of one of those has-been uh, kind of things. It's been a long time. A lot of voters, uh, you know, barely remember her name. Um, but I think so. I think they're, uh, they have a huge uphill battle, you know, uh, taking that uh, seat, I think, to do again to what I said before the break, that, you you uh, put that D Democrat behind your name as a candidate. Now you're instantly associated with Obamacare and with the president and with all the stuff going on nationally that is so radically on the left side. And I think uh, North Dakotans are too smart for that. So I also think I was thinking over the break, uh, you know, that the Democrats are playing a little bit of a gender card here, uh, Rob. I don't know if you see that too, but uh, uh, that's uh, offensive to me as a woman. Yeah. I think people should uh, be elected on their 
merits of who they are and their character and their principles, not on color or gender or anything else like that. So what you, what you think is that the Democrats are uh, in the state are um, they're putting forward female candidates to, to, to I guess, to, to cash in on some sort of a political trend? Is that? Well, I think so. I mean, they have Pam Gullison running uh, now for the House seat. And uh, I think, uh, you know, she's going to try and run a sort of a moderate uh, ticket type uh, type uh, campaign, which is you know plain and simply not true. I think she's a, a nice lady. I've met her, a hardworking uh, person certainly. But she was chief of staff for Dorgan, and that should tell you uh, tell you all right there. If you're chief of staff for a radically liberal guy like Dorgan was, um, you have to have convictions in that direction. So again, they're doing that and throwing Heidi in there instead of looking for somebody uh, maybe younger and newer in there in their camp, uh, tells me they're going to try and play the gender card a little bit. You know, North Dakota has never had a yeah. woman uh, representing us in Washington, D.C. Not that that's important, but well, we did, we did, we did, Mama we did at one time, point. You know, that that's, could be attractive to some people. Yeah. We've, we've never elected a woman. We did actually, uh, uh, the, uh, gov, um, Quentin Burdick's wife was appointed to, to finish oh, yeah. off his term, but, yeah. but never elected. Never elected. Yeah. You're right. And, and, you know, I actually asked that question of one of the Republican candidates who have gotten in the race. And I'm not saying this by way of necessarily endorsing her campaign or, or refusing to endorse her campaign. I haven't made up my mind who I want uh, to, to the nominee to be. But uh, we had uh, Re- uh, Representative Betty Grandy from the Fargo area on the program. And that was one of the questions I had asked her was how would she feel if she ultimately did, you know, get the nomination, get elected, if uh, how she would feel about being the first woman uh, member of, of the congressional delegation from North Dakota. And what she told me, it floored me, and I was I was so impressed by this, what she said was is that gender doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was great because it doesn't matter. I mean, I don't care. I'll vote for a woman. I'll vote for a man. I'll, I'll vote for whoever. Because to me, what matters is the policy and, and the philosophy that they're taking in office to make these decisions. So I thought that was great. So so if you're seeing this trend towards trying to play the, the female card coming from the left, are, are you know the, the the one female candidate in the race so far anyway uh, uh for for republicans is saying that sort of thing doesn't matter yeah absolutely and you know when betty says that she means it and and i'm not ashamed i mean i i fully support betty grandy for that congressional seat uh, she has a record she's the only one really right now in the race that has a solid record of at least people can vet her and see where she stands and what she believes in and uh, she's been active you know in our legislative uh, uh sessions for what 16 17 years now so she has a strong, strong conservative uh, um, record there, so I'm, I'm fully in support of her. But I think she's right. You know, I think we've seen that across the nation, and we saw recently in Fargo, actually, Rob, where there's a group, a tiny little group of people, gotten together, started a new organization that says elect women, you know, and, and I confronted them and said, you know, don't, don't hide your true agenda behind your gender. That's offensive to me, you know, as a woman. I think, absolutely, I'm going to be honest, I, I think women can bring a, a different element into the political thing. I think we're kind of roll up our sleeves, and we often hold the purse and the purse strings in the family and understand uh, how disastrous all this Obamacare and, and the liberal agenda is for our children and our grandchildren. So certainly uh, women bring a different uh, perspective, but that should not gender nor color, for that sake, should qualify anybody for office. It's like you said, it's their principles, their convictions, and the record of have they been involved in community service, or, you know, have they spoken out, or are they just opportunists that are running for a seat uh, because it's it's easy now it seems like to kind of throw your name in there and so yeah i agree with you i think uh, i do think that the democrats are running a gender card here and it remains to be seen if heidi gets in and i don't think she's going to get a lot of traction though the sad thing is she's got a brother who's on the air three hours yeah. a day and well that's that's the foreign and you know well that's the wild card is when you have access to uh, to something like that uh you know 24 hours a day seven days a week your own personal propaganda station will then uh, that helps <laughs> definitely, oh, but uh, yeah. you know, I, 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 I think I think you you alluded to something that was very interesting earlier in the segment when you said that, that they're going to have to campaign with with Barack Obama at the top of the ticket, and I think that's going to be the problem with every single well, I, maybe not so much the statewide candidates, but maybe the statewide candidates too, because Obamacare is a state issue. We're having that debate in North Dakota about implementing uh, health care exchanges and stuff like that. So even the state level Democrats are going to have to deal with that, but probably the federal candidates more so for the Senate in the house uh asking them you know questions like uh would you have voted for obamacare if, if you'd been in office and well you know what's their answer going to be uh you know I, yeah. I mean on one on one hand you know they're kind of between a rock and a hard place and and with heidi heitkamp especially you can't go from 
uh, you know, headlining SEIU rallies uh, in favor of Obamacare to, you know, trying to take a more nuanced position on it. And that's going to be very hard for her to overcome. Yeah, it is. And, and you know, the whole tobacco, follow the trail on the tobacco deal that she pushed through and where the money ended up on that is going to be another ugly Ugly boogeyman in the in the corner for her, you know. And I think you you hinted on something too. Not only the healthcare issue, uh, energy development, the whole EPA mess, yeah. um, and education, you know. And I think I honestly think Rob and I would encourage any of your listeners who 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 are independent or who generally vote Democratic, you know, when you get in that voting booth, um, you know, look at what what what's the deepest uh, held value in your life. You know, is, is it is it really what Obama and and Reid and Pelosi stands for? Or, or is it more common sense? And I think we need to work together to make that common sense happen. And I think North Dakota could be a national leader in that. I think uh, for obvious reasons, uh, certainly our energy development, our oil. But more than that, you know, I'm not from North Dakota originally, but, I, boy, I appreciate the common sense, hardworking uh, people that we have here. And, you know, plain and simply, we want to be left alone. Let us run our schools and run our energy development, not, not the federal government. So, so it's kind of a, if you're a Reagan Democrat sitting out there in your, you know, 50s, 60s, and 70s, I think you seriously need to go into that voting booth, uh, look into the future of your grandkids, uh, what is best, socialism or not. It's just that plain and simple. So, Yeah, and I, you know, I think the energy question is valid as well, because we have an Obama-appointed U.S. attorney here in North Dakota who used to be uh, a member of the, uh, of the Democrat National Committee representing the North Dakota Democrat Party at the national level. Uh, went from that post to being a U.S. attorney, and as U.S. attorney is now prosecuting oil companies over one dead bird. I mean, just a, a transparently partisan attack on oil development here in North Dakota. And I think that's something that, that North Dakota Democrats, who are going to put themselves on the ballot, are going to have to talk about as well. Yana, thanks for the time. Appreciate it. Up for a break. We're out of time. Okay, thanks, Rob. Thank you. Yana Murdahl, she's a part of that North Dakota Tea Party Caucus. Their event's coming up this Saturday. It's 4 o'clock p.m. I'll have all the details up at sayanythingblog.com. Check that out. I'm Rob Port, sitting in for the chairman. Don't go away. We'll be right back.